The Man Called X, tonight starring Van Heflin, who is taking over during Herbert Marshall's illness. The Man Called X is a regular Friday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. By RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. And by Canon Towels, famous for color, for design, for durability. Van Heflin in The Man Called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find The Man Called X. When we ask you to try Anison for the relief of pain due to a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, we are not asking you to try a new or unproved method. For there are many people listening in now who have been introduced to Anison tablets by their own dentist or physician. You who have received Anison this way know the effective, incredibly fast relief these tablets bring. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy to take tablet form. People by the thousands are using modern Anison today instead of other ways. Doesn't their experience seem worth following? Try Anison the next time you suffer pains from headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. You will be delighted with the results. Ask your druggist for Anison today. Anison is spelled A N A C I N. A heavy fog lies over the British territorial waters off Hong Kong, east of Kowloon Peninsula, as a British gunboat feels its way slowly through the grayish-white blanket. On its quarter deck, the commander and a man from British intelligence watch the swirling lines on the radar scope intently. We've raised something all right, Commander. A junk or sampan, judging by the size, Inspector. Then the information supplied to us by the American Bureau was quite accurate. Well, I would suggest we close in before leaping to conclusions, Inspector. Commander to number one battery, unidentified target, 500 yards, left 270 degrees, two rounds gunfire, over. Frankly, Inspector, I find it difficult to believe that we'll come up with anything. Mr. Ken Thurston has worked with us very successfully before, Commander. But from what you say, his colleague radioed from San Francisco. Now, do you believe that a man halfway around the world can possess information about these waters that we don't have? I do. Inspector, I'll give odds that all we'll stop is some illegal fishing. Or an innocent houseboat, perhaps. What were you saying, Commander? So, my friend, you have received word from the British in Hong Kong? Yes, Mr. Lee, they picked up a sampan full of illegal medical supplies. Serums, plasma, antibiotics running from Hong Kong into Red China. I still don't understand how you knew about it, Mr. Lee, and got in touch with Jim here in San Francisco. As my friends Jim Kendall and Mr. Thurston know, Mr. Chief, the House of Lee owns the largest Chinese pharmaceutical business in the world. We have branches in every major Asiatic city, including Hong Kong. That's right, Chief, and the black market stuff on that sampan came from the House of Lee. Wait a minute, Jim. You mean it was hijacked from the Hong Kong branch? Stolen? Uh, no. No. I fear my manager there is deliberately placing our stocks of precious, life-saving medicines into the hands of Red China. Who is your manager there, Mr. Lee? I think you know him very well, Mr. Kendall. His name is Sammy Lee. Sammy oh. Lee? A relative? My son, Mr. Chief. Uh, oh, sorry. I beg of you, my friends... Help me to learn the truth. Well, well, it's hardly the Bureau's business, Mr. Lee. And Hong Kong is British territory. But, Jim? If you made a crack like that to Ken Thurston, Chief, do you know what he'd say? I'll send you some jade from Hong Kong. <laughs> Pacific Airways, flight number 207.
But, Mr. Kendall, you've simply got to take me along I'm with you. I'm sorry, Pagong, But sorry. you don't know how invaluable I could be uh, to you in, in Hong Kong place. I, I, I got cousins who got cousins there. I'll even pay for my own ticket. Yeah, uh, that ain't the way I heard it. Well, that, that is, if you could advance me just, well, a slight consideration first. Okay. Yeah. Huh? Well, well, thank you, Mr. Kendall. I'll go to the window and... Hey, this is only ten bucks. I can't buy no ticket with no, this. That's for helping me with my bags. So long, Pega. But, Mr. X, I, I mean Mr. Kendall. I mean... <sighs> How do you like that? Turns me down flatter than a flat jack. I bet if Mr. X wasn't sick, I'd go along. <sighs> your pardon for interrupting your most worthy thoughts, my friend? Huh? Perhaps, my dear Mr. Zellschmidt, your transportation to Hong Kong might be arranged after all. Uh, it could. Hey, who are you? Uh, my name, sir, is Chen Wong, and I am in need of a capable uh, assistant in my business. Inasmuch as you expressed a desire to visit Hong Kong, and my business happens to be located there. Well, you understand, Mr. Wong, I, I, I'm a pretty busy financial type executive. Yeah, thousands of dollars invested. I, I couldn't work for peanuts. Oh, uh, would uh, this aid you in arriving at a decision? Uh, oh, that. Let me see. Uh, 10, 20. My stocks and bonds, of course. 50, 60, 75. A, b a big merger coming up with that Las Vegas Three Cherries and Jackpot Company. 18, 90, 100. You know something, Mr. Wong? Uh, yes, Mr. Sesame. I'm hired. <laughs> Welcome to the house of Lee. Well, <laughs> thanks. Is there something we could do for you, sir? Uh, yeah, I'd like to speak to the manager, please. The manager? Yes, Sammy Lee. Is he in? M may I ask who you are, sir? My name's Jim Kendall. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, but Mr. Lee is not in at the moment. I am Marlis Tai Sing, his assistant. Could I not be of help to you? Oh, I'm afraid not, Miss Tysing. I'll um, I'll just hang around and wait until he gets back. But but you you cannot do that, Mr. Kendall. Why not? Be because be because Mr. Lee ha ha has left Hong Kong uh, on a business trip. Where'd he go? Uh, I do not know. Well, I thought you said you were his assistant. I am. And he left without telling you where you could get in touch with him. I. Yes, that is so. Because his business concerns sampans operating off of Kowloon Peninsula, carrying illegal cargoes, huh? Who are you? I've already told you. You know what I mean. Who are you? An answer, quickly. Wow, well, that's... It's not very courteous, is it, uh, Marlitz? Answer me, Mr. Kendall, before I... You better put that gun back in your sleeve unless you want a witness to your intended homicide, huh? Oh, good afternoon, Marlitz. Lovely day, is it not? Yes, positively lovely. Well, my dear, has my order arrived yet, eh? Has it? Your order, Dr. Harvey? Oh, come now, Marlitz. Don't tell me you've forgotten it again. Oreomycin, streptomycin, chloromycetin. <laughs> Should have a familiar ring by now, my dear. You're interested in antibiotics, doctor? For what man of medicine isn't these days, sir? Well, Marl, is the ship from Singapore docked yet? Well, I'm afraid not, Doctor. But it's three days overdue, my dear. I, I know, Doctor. We'll notify you the moment it arrives. I hope so. Frankly, I'm almost beginning to wonder if it shall arrive. What do you mean? Why, with all this talk about the fortunes being made running serums and antibiotics into red China, <laughs> if I didn't know Sammy, I'd almost suspect him of being in the black market. Oh! Uh, yeah. Wait a minute. Get, I got her, get her, get her, sir. I got her. Uh, George, <sighs> fainted dead away. Now, what on earth could have caused that? Well, I would say that it was your crack about Sammy Lee and the black markets. Yes, of course. How stupid can I be? Should have known better. It was bound to upset her. Why? Oh, don't you know, old boy? Marla's is Sammy Lee's wife. <laughs> What? Uh, oh, no. Hello, Mr. Kendall. Ha! Surprised to see me here, eh? on, how in the devil did you get here? Oh, there are still some people in this world who depreciate me. Yeah, like Mr. Cheng Wong, for instance. Chen Wong? Yeah, my new business associate. Believe me, it's a wonderful job. 
I already got a paycheck. Before or after you told him that I was working with a man called X? Before, naturally. I'm no dope. I wouldn't have... Uh... Oops. Uh, uh, that's what I uh... thought. Come on, Pagan. Huh? Where are we going? Have a little talk with your new boss, Chen Wong. <laughs> So, Mr. Kendall, you believe that I hired the estimable Pagan Zellschmidt merely to obtain information concerning you. Any other explanation, Chen Wong? No, no. You are quite correct in your surmise. It was rather expensive, but well worth it. Why? The activities of uh, Man Core X and any of his associates are always of interest to one such as me. Particularly when they may well be in direct conflict to my own. Are they? <laughs> they will not be for long. Well, that's nice. Yes, yes. You see, I am well acquainted with the fact that you are making inquiries concerning Sammy Lee and certain activities regarding pharmaceutical supplies. So? So your interest in these matters will cease within 12 hours. What makes you think that? Oh, it's quite simple, my dear sir. Within 12 hours, you shall either have left Hong Kong or you shall be dead. Hello. Mr. Kendall? That's right. This is Marlis Tai Singh. I have some news about Sammy Lee. Good. What is it? I want you to meet him at our warehouse in the dock area within half an hour. He has some words for you. Hmm. Any idea what it's all about? No, Mr. Kendall. He said only that it concerns disgrace. The disgrace that has tainted his father's house with red. <laughs> What's this all about anyways, Mr. Kendall? Why did we come chasing down here to the docks like this? To learn what business your ex-boss is in. Huh? The Chen Wong guy? What's he got to do with it? There's the warehouse just ahead. Well, uh, suppose you ask Sammy Lee about that. I don't get it, Mr. Kendall. All I know, I got no job, no money, and now... Hey, that car. It's coming right up behind those crates. Back. point there, Pagan. Come on. You mean you're going into that warehouse after all that? Why not? But, but that car just pulled away from this joint. Maybe it was the Sammy Lee who tried to bump us out. That's what I want to find out. <sighs> There's nobody around. So what's that bell ringing like that? Burglar alarm. Huh? Now come on, let's try the back. See? There's nobody here either. So why don't we give this joint a brush up and get back to that hotel before the rain gets any worse? Rain? What in the devil are you talking about? Oh, sure. The roof is leaking. I just got a couple of drops of that on the back of my hand. Look. Here they... Uh-huh. Mr. Candle, those drops there, they're not rain. Uh, you're right, Pagan. Look up there on the hook of that pulley. On the hook of this foot? <gasps> yeah. Oh. Sammy Lee. We'll continue with The Man Called X in just a moment. Here's a word from RCA Victor. RCA Victor has done it again. Yes, now you can easily own America's all-time top favorite tunes on RCA Victor Red Seal and popular single records, 50 all-time greats. Your choice of any or all of the greatest selling titles of them all. A star-studded collection of such wonderful music you'll want to hear it over and over again and again. RCA Victor's 50 all-time greats brings you hits from past and present. 
the most memorable music from both the classical and the popular fields. Fats Waller sings, I'm going to sit right down and write myself a letter. Leopold Stokowski conducts his symphony orchestra in the Blue Danube Waltz. Iturbi plays Claire de Lune. And Vaughn Monroe sings, There, I've Said It Again. Yes, these are just an inkling of the many titles contained in RCA Victor's 50 All-Time Greats, recorded on 78 and 45. Be sure to treat yourself to these wonderful favorites, beautifully performed for you by the greatest stars on RCA Victor's roster. See your nearest dealer tomorrow about RCA Victor's 50 All-Time Greats, recorded by RCA Victor. Now, Act Two of The Man Called X, tonight starring Van Heflin, with Leon Velasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. <laughs> Acting for Mr. X, Jim Kendall is in Hong Kong, attempting to break up the illegal traffic in American medicinal supplies being smuggled into Red China. A Chinese pharmaceutical firm, the House of Lee, is apparently involved. And now, in a private office at the House of Lee, Jim Kendall is talking with Marlis Tai Sing, widow of the murdered Sammy Lee. Yes, Mr. Kendall. It was Chen Wang who was responsible for all our sorrows. Chen Wang who tried to blackmail Sammy into giving our supplies to Red China. What pressure did he use, Marlis? The most effective pressure of all, Mr. Kendall threats against my life. Oh, oh I, I begged mm. Sammy not to do it. I would have taken any risk rather than to give aid and comfort to the enemies of my people. But it was no use. He agreed to work with Chen Wong. Yes. And now he's dead. Mm. Well, uh, maybe you can carry on for him. Carry on? Yeah. Um, we need proof against Chen Wong. Suppose you tell him that you need money badly now that uh, Sammy's dead. And that you'll help him the same way Sammy did. That is, if he'll cut you in on the black market. And you, Mr. Kendall? After all, you are Chen Wang's most important target now. What are you going to do? Pay a visit to Dr. James Harvey. Dr. Harvey? What, what, what could he possibly have to do with this affair? That's what I was wondering. I found his card lying on the warehouse floor underneath Sammy's body. <laughs> Have you drop in, Kendall? Delighted, though I must say you don't look as though you required my services. A picture of health, my boy. A picture of health. Did you say that about Sammy Lee, too, Doctor? Uh, Sammy Lee, I don't quite get the connection. Sammy's dead. And... Oh, surely you must be joking. Why, I examined him not three weeks ago. Not a blessed thing wrong with him, I swear to that. He was murdered, Doctor, a little over an hour ago. Murdered, by George. That difficult to believe. Most difficult. Is it? Well, then maybe you can explain a few things about the bloodstains on this card of yours. Card of a... Yeah, right. George, it is my card, and those stains do look like blood, for a fact. Where'd you get this? It was lying on the floor underneath Sammy Lee's body. Oh, doesn't mean to think, of course, you realize that. No proof that I shot him. Matter of fact, it's not really proof of anything. No, no, but it might be interesting to learn just how it got there. And uh, how you knew he'd been shot when all I said was that he'd been murdered. You'd like to clear that up for me, Doctor? Yes. I think it's high time that I did. I'm with British intelligence, Kendall, working on the same thing you are, the smuggling of illegal goods into red China. Mm, now, that could be just a little too pat, Harvey. True, but perhaps this will convince you. You work with a man called X with the Bureau. You wirelessed our office from San Francisco with certain information. It enabled us to pick up a sampan carrying contraband off Kowloon Peninsula. Does that convince you? Mm. Well, it should, shouldn't it? Uh, by the way, uh, were you anywhere near the warehouse tonight? Why, no. Why? On my way up there, I exchanged a few shots with somebody in a car. I thought you might have known something about that. Why should I know anything about it? Well, it was just an idea. I saw your car parked outside here, a couple of bullet holes in the body. Good night, Doctor. <laughs> It was a bad mistake for me to see Chen Wang, Mr. Kendall. A very bad mistake. He didn't go for your story, Ma. Oh, he laughed at me and told me to inform you that your time has run out. He means to kill you. Oh, that's bad. 
He means to kill all of us. Hey, that's bad. Let's get out of here oh, come quick. Come on now, relax. I've got a call in for Dr. Harvey. Oh, you believe that British intelligence will be able to help us then? Well, if he'll cooperate with us, I think we'll have a chance, Morris. <laughs> Chen Bong, he's here, he's here. Quiet, you idiot. That's only the phone. Oh. Hello. That's right. You're sure of that? I see. Okay, thank you. Who was it, Mr. Kendall? British intelligence. Well, well, what did they say, Mr. X? I mean, Mr. What did they say? What did they say? It was short and to the point, Pagan. They don't know any Dr. James Harvey. But, but why do we have to go back to that Lee warehouse like this? Don't you realize that you're taking my life in your hands? I just want to check on a shipment of antibiotics. And who? What shipment are you talking about, Mr. Kendall? One Dr. Harvey was so interested in. Three days overdue from Singapore. But it is still overdue, and we have received no word as to when it will arrive. Maybe you didn't, Marlis, but somebody did. I saw that shipment in the warehouse this afternoon. Go in. I still do not understand what you hope to learn here. As long as we're still in Hong Kong and alive, Chin Wong's going to be worried. <laughs> He's worried. So if he wants those serums and antibiotics from Singapore, he'll have to work fast. Ooh, that came from the back of the warehouse. Huh? Now, come on, let's see what's going on there. Mr. Candle. Look. Yeah, yeah, Chin Wong and his men. What? But what are they doing with all this crazy... That's stuff? the Singapore shipment. They're moving it out. We've got them. We oh, have? Yeah? yeah, there's a phone in the office. British intelligence will be out here in five minutes. Come on. I would not advise trying it, what? Mr. Kendall. Look. Well. She's got a... Ooh. Our little game is over. Your time has run out. There is nothing further you can do to stop us from taking that shipment and the two of you into Red China. I trust you find the cabin of our little ship quite comfortable, gentlemen. We might if you'd put that, that thing away. Then. Uh, <laughs> merely a slight precaution. We will rendezvous with a gunboat in a few moments. The medicinal supplies will be transferred aboard. Then the commissar of the gunboat will decide what is to be done with you. <laughs> you mean there's a choice? If he believes the People's Republic can make use of you, you will be taken to the mainland. If not, you will be disposed of at sea. But, but that puts us right between the devil. No, well, that's more of a break than Sammy Lee got, Pagan. You must have planned this for a long time, Marlis, making Sammy fall in love with you and then pulling that fake blackmail gag on him. Yes. What was that? We have reached our rendezvous, Elschmidt. That rocket was fired to inform the gunboat of our presence. It will be alongside in a few moments. Look, look, baby, before it gets here. Uh, couldn't we make a deal of some kind? <laughs> the People's Republic does not make deals, Herr Schmidt. We take what we need, whether it is antibiotics, serums, or your lives. We... That sound. What is it? Mr. Kendall. Just the gunboat. But they fired a shell at us. Sure, a warning to stay put until they come alongside. Warning? One of our gunboats would not fire a warning at us. That's right. Then what are they? British. It is a British gunboat. With Dr. Harvey aboard, Marlis. What? Harvey? He's the one who called me at the hotel to give me a go-ahead on our plan. But you said it was British intelligence reporting that Harvey was not... Chen! Not so fast, Marlis. Come on, I'll take that gun. Oh, oh better, huh? Alice, what's happening here? Drop that gun, Chen. No, Kendall! <laughs> now the cabin door, Pig on fast, fast! Yeah, yeah, you bet. All right, Marlis. Now, if you want something to do until Harvey gets here, we'll just fix up Chen's shoulder for him. Maybe that'll keep you out of trouble. I thought I'd pop, I see! 
Boy, oh. Well, they cooked their geese all right. Don't have to worry about them trying to steal anything again. No, I'm afraid you're wrong, Pig. Huh? As long as Marlis and Chen and those like them are still around, we've got plenty to worry about. You heard what she said. They'll try to take anything they want. Antibiotics, lives, even the world. Our star for tonight, Van Heflin, will return in just a moment. But first, here is a word about dramatic values. Listen. Listen closely. Don't miss this. It's important. (laughs) Canon, the world's most popular towels, are waiting for you now. Right now, in big, value-packed, money-saving Canon towel sales. You'll need more towels with summer on the way. Here's a real opportunity to stock up at prices that will save you money. There are big, beautiful buys in Canon towels of every size and type. And a wide choice of lovely colors and designs. Canons give you the most for your money in every way. In real value? In lovely color. And in beautiful design. Canon towels absorb more, wear longer, stay lovely longer. Canons are big, fluffy, Thirsty towels. No wonder more people buy Canon towels than all other towels combined. Be sure you get the most for your money. Get Canons. See your newspaper for these special Canon towel sales. Get to your store now and get in on the big, big, big Canon values. Now here again is our star for tonight's program, Mr. Van Heflin. As Herbert Marshall would say, thanks for being with us. And, uh, by the way, my thanks to Will Wright, Viola Vaughn, Eric Snowden, Ben Wright, Tony Barrett, and Harry Bartell. Now, next week, our story takes us behind the Iron Curtain to a gloomy fortress called Stalin Plus Seven, where an innocent American has confessed to being a spy and a saboteur. And I don't mean Leon Velasco, who will be along, of course, as Pagan Zellschmidt. So, uh, please join us, won't you, when we next return with The Man Called X. Good night. The Man Called X is the Friday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. By RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. And by Canon Towels, famous for color, for design, for durability. Among Towels, America's number one bestseller. The Man Called X is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music by Milton Charles. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. Van Heflin is currently seen in the United Artists production of The Prowler. All characters and incidents on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Be sure to hear the magnificent Montague with Monty Woolley, formerly heard on Friday, now brought to you as a Saturday night feature of NBC's All-Star Festival. And until next week, same time and station, this is Jack Latham saying good night for The Man Called X. William Bendix stars in The Life of Riley. Enjoy it on NBC. Thank you.